I really need to come up with an idea for my next video. I really think I should do like a basic foam smith, basics 101 sort of thing. I'm just not really sure hey. what I should. Hey, babe. Guess yes. what? What, dear? I finished my zealot cosplay. I, I I finished your zealot sword. That's so awesome. But I still need shoulder armor. So you got to get on that. No. No. You're going to make it. What? She's going to learn how to foam smith today. Welcome back to Building Steam. I'm Brian Fadrosh of Brian Fadrosh Designs. I'm Lady Delatois. Of? Lady Delatois. And today we're going to be covering some basic foam smithing 101. Uh, Sheila's gotten her entire zealot outfit completed, all the fabric stuff. Um, I just recently finished up your zealot sword. I have a little bit of detailing that I want to do around the tines, but other than that, Super cool. this is pretty much done. So there should be a build video for this coming out shortly. Uh, but it occurred to us that you needed some shoulder armor. So we were looking at the uh, photo picture or the reference picture mm -hmm. of Zealot. And we were looking at her shoulders and trying to figure out what we wanted to do. So I always start off with trying to figure out what pattern I'm going to use or if I'm going to be building a pattern. Um, so we looked at a couple different patterns. There was one that you had looked at from Kamui Cosplay, um, which if you haven't checked her out, by all means, definitely make sure you do. She has some fantastic patterns. But I just, I think that one that you were looking at the point kind of sweeps out. So I think that might not necessarily be the look that you were going for. So what I thought of was for the big guy right above my finger, as you can see from that shoulder bell, has a little bit more of that ideal shape. So what I did is I took that pattern and shrunk it down to about the same size. That's good because it's a little big right now, the way that it is. Yeah, and it's not, not, not a good that look. It would be my shoulders to my waist. So in the meantime, I'll set this off to the side and why don't we head over to the workspace and then you can start working on that. But before we do, um, if you guys are enjoying what we're doing here on the page, make sure you're hitting the like button. Make sure you're hitting the subscribe button. Give us a comment down below. Send um, us presents. Send us presents. Tell us you love us. Absolutely. Um, but in the meantime, we just can't get enough of that. Not really. <laughs> in the meantime, you ready to start cutting some foam? No. That's good. But, okay. you, that's good because you're not. <laughs> I'm wearing my uniform. I. We will show the uniform. We will. That's how you were allowed to come down and work in the shop today. Is <laughs> you wore your uniform. <laughs> All right. Let's get over and let's get started. Okay. All right. So these are your two patterns. Okay. So. Backwards, Pac-Man. Back. Backwards Pac-Man. Weird Bendy City. Right. So okay. Backwards Pac-Man was the first one we were looking at. And again, I think you wouldn't like it all that much because once you put it on, that's going to flare out. So that was going to kind of give you that sweat point, which I don't think you really want. So this is a very small shoulder bell, which I think once all that kind of goes together. With all those, all those seam lines. You just all, want me to have to do all those seam lines. I want you to do all these seam lines. You're a jerk. I, I know. <laughs> I gotta deal with seam lines. You gotta deal with seam lines. Um, however, I have a solution for you as far as this one goes. I went and already did it for you so you don't have a center seam line. Ah. Uh, so guess what you get to do now? Cut that out? You get to cut this out. Okay. Where's my rotary cutter? You, there's no rotary cutter. That so sucks. So you can either use scissors or... Can use this the stabby now, knife. The stabby knife. Now, what I what I typically do is I'll use scissors to cut out the exterior of it, okay. and then I'll use the stabby knife, as you like to refer to it, for all the smaller parts. I. What? <laughs> now wait a minute. What? Trash can's right there. Trash can's right next to you. By the way, if you notice, this is the appropriate kilt attire for the shop. You must be wearing a kilt to work in my shop. And a black shirt. And a black shirt. And if we're wearing black tank tops. We would look just like Tobias McCurry. Tobias McCurry. I thought about wearing a tank top, but then I wasn't going to match you. Now, as far as these lines go, you want to get you want to get as close to that point if you as you can. If you're a little short, it's not a big deal. 
Okay. The important parts will be where all of these are matching up. I feel like you're watching me. I am watching you. God damn it. You want me to do it for you? No. Okay. Okay, so the one thing, wow. You broke it. You broke Good it. Good job. I wasn't using it. You, were you just like it. waved it around anyway. All right, so the one thing that I will say, like for some of the ones where you cut into the line, not a huge deal because foam will stretch a little bit. So it's like a lot of these, there'll be some given the way we're going to do the seams. You have some play. The one thing that you do want to do if you notice like right here we got a little bit laying over we'll make it a little bit easier if you're right along that line and believe it or not even just that little itty bitty bit will make a difference because I made these before the one thing I will say is these lines you want to get these lines as close as you can and the only reason for that is it gives you a much better surface for them to connect to. So in theory, that all curves like that. Mm -hmm. So you want these to kind of connect as much as you can. Okay. So that's why you'd want to kind of straighten those up. But, see? Mm -hmm. So the fun part, you get to do that all over again, but on foam. Okay. So the one thing is you just cut all that paper which dulls a blade, you always want to make sure you're using a very sharp blade when you're cutting foam. So to cut foam... It's a good thing I bought you 500 of them. I know, no kidding, I'm glad. I just cut my finger. See, look, I stabbed myself. All right, so when you're cutting foam, the way you're holding the blade is good. You want to hold it like a knife, and you want to hold it like a pen. You always want to keep the blade perpendicular to your cutting surface because see how that gives you a nice straight line? Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I always struggled with is when you're doing it, that blade can waver. So it, when I can almost guarantee it's going to waver. I will do my best though. So you don't, <laughs> so you don't want to cut like that. Well, clearly that, that's a mess. And you obviously don't want to cut even like that. See how you can see there's that, that little bit of a curve, not a huge deal. But you want to try to cut as straight as you can. So do you want to practice? That's pretty good. Now, the other thing that you can do, because thankfully a lot of these are straight. So when you're cutting, if I may. I don't know. Is it so, safe to give it to you? you yes. To be. I typically cut like this, but you always want the blade to do most of the work for you. So you can actually pull it at a little bit of a shallower angle and you're still getting that straight line you're just using more of the blade to cut so when you were cutting you were kind of cutting like this you can actually do it like that and you have more of that blade surface cutting okay so I cut a piece big enough that you would be able to do one like this be able to do one like this. These should be symmetrical. I always flip my pattern. Always. So the one thing that I always do is I say that's A. I say that's B. Okay. So I know which is which. So what you're going to want to do is now trace all of that out onto the foam. Now one trick use one, two, three blocks. I got to clean mine because then your pattern won't move. Oh, you. This is awesome. I can just stand here. I mean...
again. You sure? Is that a trick question? <laughs> nope, you're good. Now, what will make things much easier is normally when I do two pieces like this, well, one, we want to make sure we label them. So this was your first one, right? Yes. Okay, ah, don't use that. For this, you do want to use a Sharpie. And the reason you want to use a Sharpie, so that's A. Really? Because it looks like a triangle. That's B. <laughs> because if you use this, I'll show you here. See how it digs into the foam? Mm -hmm. So it's one more thing that you're going to have to fix and hide. When you're using a Sharpie, it's nice and flat. So start with that one. I'm afraid. <laughs> you're afraid? I'm afraid. Do you, want, do you want me to do one first? No. I mean, watching you do one isn't going to make me any less afraid to do the next one. Okay, so some of the things you want to remember when you're cutting. You want to start before your line. So the same way as you're doing what you're doing as far as fabrics go. So I would start the blade like here mm -hmm. and then drag it down along. Mm -hmm. Again, once you get it going, you want to make sure that your blade's not wandering left or right because that'll give you that nice perpendicular cut. What I tend to do is I use my pinky. Once I figure out that position, I keep it there and just lock it in. Okay. Okay. There you go. Now that's an excellent cut. That is nice and straight. But see how you got those little wave marks? Yes. Do you know how to avoid that? No. Would you like me to show you? So when you're cutting these, here, I'll cut this part. Because what you're doing is you're putting the blade in mm -hmm. and then you're going, stopping, going, stopping, going, stopping. So that's what gives you that little bit of a wave. So you want to try to make it A nice smoother. You, do you know what I mean? You don't want you don't want to stop as much. Now this isn't a huge deal because we'll be able to use the Dremel to knock that down and it'll be nice and flat and it'll look beautiful. But see how it doesn't do it there. So you just want to try to you want to try to do a continuous cut. Now for this, because if you're looking at this, see how those go together. This, these are a pain. What I would suggest doing: start here, cut this one flip it around, and then cut back down into that point. Okay. You'll get a sharper point as opposed to trying to line up that point both ways. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. You want me to cut this one out? Sure. Okay. Probably take like 10 seconds. See, not 10 seconds. Just a little bit faster. Okay. But if you notice, you did good. You don't look any different. So guess what you get to do now? I get to... Like twiddle it with my fingers. What no. is, what what technique is that? <laughs> it so needs now, to be twiddled. So now you have to <laughs> needs to be twiddled. Now you got to glue it all. Okay. So we get to use contact cement now. Cool. Let's get high. Okay. I will give you the respirator. <laughs> <laughs> Sheila's gonna put on the respirator. Wait. When you're putting it on. Here, I'll do one for you. You have a respirator on. I think you just want to make me wear the respirator. See how much is on there? When you're putting it on, mm -hmm. you gotta get you gotta get it from top to bottom. You gotta get that whole edge. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you want it to be about like that. Nice thing coat. Oh, yours. 
I would go a little bit more up along that top edge. So you want that very top edge to look wet. There you go. Just like right about there too. There you go. All right, so, dear, we're in a very large room. And I can turn the fan on so you can take that off. This is messy. It is. Am I doing bad by being messy? No. It's kind of going everywhere, though. It's... It, it. It'll be all right. Why? I don't know if I'm doing enough or not enough. How do you know? You want to get a nice thin coat. That's how you know. You want to get a nice thin coat on but it? Is that a nice thin coat or is that not a nice thin coat? <laughs> I gotta be able to see. How do I know? No, that's good. What no, a that's nice good. Thin coat is. No, that's no, that's good. See how it looks. Side? See how it looks wet. So like you missed a little bit right here. So like usually, see how I get that on the brush like that. That's usually what I'll do. Am I taking too long? Is the other end gonna be? As long as they're not touching, you'll be fine. Huh? I mean, they're right next to each other. I know they're right next to each other. As long as you have a little bit of a gap, you'll be okay. But they're right next to each other. How can I make it not? They're already dry. You usually have to wait about five to ten minutes after applying it before sticking stuff together. You always want to make sure this line lines up when you're putting them together. Are you going to let me do it? Or are you just going to follow it? I'm going to show you. So you want to line that up. So all of these meet. That's why there's no registration marks on these. So these always go even with each other. Okay. Okay. So when you take that one, you want this edge to line up so you have as little of a seam as possible. Okay. Yeah. Pretty good so far. Meh. It's okay. Other than that one spot, you did really good. When you're doing this one, you want to get that corner into that corner, but don't stick that together until you get this together. Or do you just want me to do it? No, I'll try. Okay. So as you're I mean, running, I may not succeed, but as that's you're, life. Right? But now, as as you're running that along, you got to remember you want that to curve a little bit, so you want to kind of bend this piece as you're doing it. That's pretty close. That was pretty close. It's not bad. No, 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 I do. Okay. I do. You don't get to do the last one. I do. <laughs> he has to live with me, folks. I don't know. I think it's together. I mean. What? Uh, together. It's together. So a lot of these aren't going to be all that visible. Once we put Plasti Dip over it, once we put paint over it, a lot of these seams you're not going to see all that much. Okay. So you did, you did an awesome job. Thanks. Um, I would probably, honestly, I would probably see if I about working some details into that first. Okay. Um, the other thing that I would do is I would clean up these edges on the Dremel. What seems to work is if you do a little bit of a chamfer on the inside and outside edges, it just makes it look a little bit more machined. So I can okay. do that for you real quick just to have it done so it's quick. It won't take long. Um... So why don't you take a look at the reference stuff and see what you'd like to do to add to these as opposed to just having, do you know what I mean? Whatever kind of details you want to do, then we can work from there. Okay. Sound good? Okay. All right, I'll chamfer these for you.
most of these set. A little bit more rounded. <laughs> you were like, you're going to use the heat gun on these. <laughs> how, do you, how do you tell when you heat gunned it enough? The, you well, just what, know. It, you just know. <laughs> now, part of it is you want to watch. Like, when it starts turning black, <laughs> you don't want to do that anymore. Well, yeah. Most of the time, you're going to notice that when you're heat forming it, you're going to notice there's a different sheen on top of it. The okay. reason... That should be good. The reason for that being... Wow, you really went to town on that one. Sorry. Well, you didn't tell me to stop. You were just like, you'll just know. And I didn't know yet, so I kept going because there were no little voices telling me to stop. There you this go. is foam clay. So what I need you to do is I need you to knead the foam clay. So you want to stretch it out, put it back together, mash it together. I'm going to show you what, what works for me. You may find a different way to do this. So with putting foam clay directly on foam, it works better if it's wet. Hence this ray bottle. So I usually work in small sections at a time. So we're going to work on this part. Okay. Okay. So what I would do, because you're not going to need a lot. So just a small little dab. We are going to make a little pot out of coils. No, we're not. <laughs> All right. So look. Is that really the thin piece that I have? Yes. What I will do is take that really thin piece and run that along the seam okay. as far as it'll go. And then I'll start making it flat okay. along that seam and try to get it as smooth as I can. And then what you can do is you can always add water to it. Now this stuff will shrink a little bit once it dries. But if you do that, what that'll do is give you a real thin layer. But I always go with a thin layer, but see how that's kind of already, you can already kind of still see the seam there. So I would just, when I put the next piece down, it'll go over that. So I would run that piece from like there. Yep. And then kind of smooth that down over. And then I would take some water. I would spray the top of that. That was a lot of water. <laughs> <laughs> I have paper towels, just saying. How long have you lived with me? <laughs> I know. I mean, is there any stopping me from being the way that I am? So, and and, there and just isn't. No, there's not. <laughs> I mean, technically speaking, all you're really doing, or at least what I've been doing, is building up enough of the foam clay along the seam, so when we take the Dremel, we can take that sanding stone one, the rounded one, and go over that. And what it'll do is it'll just knock it a little bit flatter. And then that will have the same consistency as a regular foam. It's not bad. That one's yours. Oh. <laughs> Still not bad. Now, why didn't you do that scene? Because I couldn't see it. I, I was going to say, you can barely... That's, <laughs> that's a really good scene. There is... I got I to gotta show you because this is how amazing of a job she did. There, there, there is a scene there. Like right in there, but you can't tell. So once that dries, what we'll do is I will sand it down. I'm obviously going to need to do, like I can already see, we'll need to do a little bit more on there. But how? It's so blurgy. Because it just settles into the seam. Put so much. Don't mess with it. The moment you start messing with that, you know what's going to end up happening? You're going to end up pulling all of that off. Okay. I won't touch it. I mean, you can if you want to, but it's going to...
You're fine. There you go. Pull the can back a little bit. You want me to be a little bit further back. You want me to do it for you? No. Okay. I just don't like not being good at things. I'm a big girl. I can handle it. sideways right and then go right along so in other words you want to hit this very edge there you go that was that was perfect uh, yep you just got to hit right in there yep there you go too much that's a little too much no big deal I would do is take the mop brush, get it on there, and then do a nice even coat because we're going to use the paint to kind of smooth some of this out. So what I would do, technically you should water it down, but what I would do is that kind of motion okay. where you're kind of dabbing it on as opposed to do you know what I mean? Yes. And then dab the whole thing. So now that the pauldrons are completed, what would you like to talk about? Well, perhaps we should bring up the fact that we didn't get quite all of the footage. Okay, I might have I might have neglected to record a thing or two. One or two things. One or two things. So one of the things that I neglected to record was the incredible paint job you did on this. So what did you do on this? I started with the... As filmed, we started with the bloodline, the, the played FX bloodline paint. Um, but unfortunately, true to its name, it does dry sort of a reddish brown like dried blood, um, which was not the color we were looking for. We wanted something richer and more red. So I put the cadmium red, the heavy body ca cadmium red on top of that, which is the same one that's on the sword. But that was too bright. So then I went back on top of that and did a layer of heavy body crimson red, and that made it perfect. And I'm very I happy with it. So I think it came out. I really like the different. It gives it more depth, I think. Yes, absolutely. I have no idea what I'm talking about. No, no, it does. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I really has, like the paint job on this. It has shadows. Yes. Um, and then what I'll end up doing is I'll follow that same, well, kind of that same process because I already did the cadmium on the sword, but then I'll do the plaid and then I'll do the crimson and then we'll get it to be as close to this as, as humanly possible. And if worse comes to worse, I'll just redo the whole red section. Uh, the other thing that I neglected to record were the magnets that we put on the inside of the pauldrons. Um, and what we did is I used these guys, which were um, old hard drive magnets. So in order to get the magnet off the old hard drive bracket, you actually have to bend it. So I kind of realized that with bending it, it gives it a really nice curve. So we actually attached them to her harness and then put the magnet on the inside of the pauldron. So they actually attach to the harness. And as near as I can tell, um, they're staying put pretty much through your full range of motion. Yeah. 
So I think that'll yeah. be I think that'll be really awesome. I think it's something I'll probably start using in my own builds. But yeah, no, I th I think overall you did an absolutely outstanding job on these. I think these are going to really complement the outfit. I'm really looking forward to you putting the whole thing on. Okay. Which is coming soon. Um, and then I'm going to need a little weathering. And then I'm going to throw these on your shoulders. Awesome. So as far as weathering these goes, the only question that I have for you before we talk about the weathering or do the weathering, which we'll do as a separate video, uh, do you want it? Do you want these to be have a shiny finish to them, or do you like the finish that's on them now? I mean, I think they do still have they have a sheen right now. I think once we put them on with the costume, we can see if they complement the sheen of the costume or if they need to be shinier. Okay. The only reason I ask is simply because when you're doing weathering on stuff like that, mm -hmm. if we want to have a higher sheen on this, we want to put that sheen on here first and yeah, then do the weather because the weathering is supposed to be added to it. Other than that, I think these are done. I think that's a wrap. All right. There's no magnets. <laughs> I like it. I think I, I think I th I think you did an amazing job putting these together. Um, thank you. I enjoyed it. I had a fun time. I don't think that I would want to may do all of my own foam work from now on any more than you would want to do all of your own clothing <clears throat> creation after we do the video where I teach you how to sew. Um, I am so terrified. You're going to be I'm fine. Terrified. He's going to be fine. I'm going to break your sewing machine. He's not. Um, if I disappear, I broke her sewing machine and she buried me in the backyard. <laughs> but, but I, you know, I enjoyed being down here and I think you were a good teacher. Thank you. And I hope that anybody watching this video uh, enjoyed the process of learning how to create something from foam from start to finish at the direction of a foam master foam smith. Yeah, you right there. Oh, me. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I thought there was someone stand behind yeah, me. Yeah, I'm talking about you. Uh, it, speaking of which, if you guys are working on a project right now, if you're just starting out a project, have a project that you're stuck on, if you have any questions or if you want some direction or any advice, by all means, feel free to hit both of us up. Um, we're available here on our YouTube channel. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. And we're always happy to help and always happy to answer any questions you guys may have. Sure. So... All right, you need to go get changed so I can take All some right. pictures of you. Let's do it. Okay, cool. Okay. So anything else we're adding to this one? I don't think so. All right, so I think this one's a wrap. I think so. Okay. We will catch you guys in the next video. And as always, say goodnight, Gracie. Goodnight, Gracie.